we will discuss more about radiation in this class. In the last class, we just uh, introduced you to radiation, the requirement of not having any medium that means, the radiation can take place without any medium being present. The radiative properties of a substrate in terms of reflectivity, absorptivity and transmittivity and the concept of an ideal body in terms of radiation which is which is termed as the black body which can emit whose emission at a given temperature is the maximum. It is going to absorb everything that falls into it and it is a diffuse emitter that means, the emission coming out of a, of a black body does not have any directional dependence. We have also introduced the concept spectral that means, anything which depends on the wavelength at which we are considering at which the emission is taking place. So, all these quantities all these properties namely the reflectivity, the, the transmittivity and the absorptivity are spectral in nature. That means, the absorption of, of a radiation is going to be different at different values of the wavelength. So, the spectral nature of radiation concept of a black body and that the radiation can be treated in two ways. Uh, the one is based on the wave nature and the second is based on the quantum concept. These were introduced in the last class. In this class, we are going to know more about two fundamental properties of a black body. That means, first is going to be what is the what is what is the black body radiation intensity when a black body is at a given temperature. So, how much of energy per unit area uh, per unit wavelength and uh, per unit solid angle will introduce the concept later on that this black body is emitting. So, that is the uh, spectral black body radiation intensity. And secondly, we will see what is going to be the total emissive power of a black body at a given temperature. That means, if a black body having unit area is placed at the center of a hemisphere, how much would be the total energy emitted by this black body of unit area at a given length and at a given temperature. So, these are the two main concepts which we would cover in today's class. So, let us first start with black body radiation intensity in which case which is going to. So, we denote that as I the intensity B stands for the black body lambda denotes the wavelength dependence and of course, it is going to be different and different temperature. So, the temperature has to be specified while we are discussing about the black body radiation intensity. And in this case, we are going to going to uh, rely on the Planck's distribution. So, what is black body radiation intensity? It is defined as the magnitude of radiation energy which is emitted by a black body at an absolute temperature T at any wavelength lambda in any given direction. So, it, it gives you the idea the, the quantum of radiation energy which is emitted at in any given direction and at a specific wavelength. So, the radiation energy of course, would, would therefore, depend on the temperature, it is going to depend on the lambda the wavelength and it will it is a, it will have a directional property. So, using Planck's distribution the magnitude of the black body radiation intensity can be expressed for the case of vacuum. So, the magnitude of the black body radiation intensity spectral black body radiation intensity at a given temperature into vacuum is expressed in this form, where h is the well known Planck's constant. So, h is the Planck's constant the value of which is available in any textbook I am not writing it over here. C is the uh, c is the velocity of light and the k the k that you see over here is the Boltzmann constant. So, that is also the value of which is also available in 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 your text. So, if you if you think about uh, what would be the units of the black body radiation intensity uh, from the definition we understand that it is going to be energy 
per unit area, per unit wavelength, per unit solid angle, because we are we are talking about uh, in any given direction. So I'll, I'll I'll tell you what this solid angle is all about, but uh, the definition or the units of the black body radiation intensity therefore can be expressed in terms of energy which is watts area wavelength is customarily expressed in terms of micron so that's why the micron is there in the denominator and the solid angle is 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 the unit of solid angle is steradian so steradian comes into the denominator so the units of the black body radiation intensity i b lambda t the spectral black body radiation intensity is watt per meter square per unit per micron per steradian so what is a solid angle let's uh, since we are going to use the concept of solid angle you, you, you are probably aware of this solid angle but i'll still do this one more time so let's say this is the in over here therefore it's sort of a cone which is my area of interest let's say the area is da the distance from the center from this point which i denote it as o let it be r so this is the solid angle subtended by the area da at the center and this d a is normal perpendicular to the direction. So, therefore, this d a is perpendicular to the dotted line and the solid angle is defined as the area times r square. Had this area been at an angle with the line which comes out of this origin that specifying the direction then the projection of this area perpendicular to the direction has to be provided that means d a has to be substituted by d a cos theta if this is the area through which the radiation is passing through so therefore the projection of this area onto this side has to be substituted for d a. So, d a is therefore, perpendicular to the direction and this has to be kept in mind. So, if you if you if you extend this, so for a hemisphere this uh, the, the, the from the center from its center the solid angle is simply going to be equal to twice pi and when you consider a full sphere this is simply going to be equal to 4 pi. So, these are obvious that means what is going to be what is going to be this uh, the value of the solid angle for the case of a hemisphere and for the case of a sphere. So, as before if let us say as I was telling you if this is the origin and I have some area which is not perpendicular to which is not perpendicular to this and therefore, let us say the area vector makes an angle of 45 degree with this direction with this direction and let us say if this d area the area is about 4 centimeter square. So, this is the area vector which is always perpendicular to this area. So, therefore, using the definition d omega the solid angle as d a by r square and this d a is simply going to be the area which is so let us d a 1. So, this must be equal to d a 1 the projection of d a 1 in in this direction. So, this is going to be d a 1 cos theta 1 divided by r 1 square. So, this is how this solid angle is solid angle is evaluated. So, if if you if it is just part of a circle and if this is d l at a distance of r then the plane angle this alpha let us call it as d alpha d alpha. So, d alpha is simply going to be d l by r that is this standard relation when we are talking about a plane angle and when we are talking about a solid angle 
like this. If this is the distance is r and this area is d a n, then in that case the d omega is simply going to be d a n by r square, where a n is the area normal to this direction. So, that is the that is the what, what we call is a plane angle and what is what is known as the solid angle. So, next thing is important because it is going to give us some more insights into the whole process and it is a very important quantity which is known as the black body emissive power. So, what is a black body emissive power the expression for which we need to find out. So, what is black body emissive power it is the radiation energy per unit area of a black body at T at an absolute temperature T in all directions in all directions in a hemispherical space. So, this is what is known as the black body emissive power and we need to find out what would be its expression based on our knowledge of black body radiation intensity. So, whereas black body radiation intensity is in a given direction, the black body emissive power is in all directions in a hemispherical space. So, the difference between these two must be kept, kept in mind. In one case, the radiation intensity specifies a direction. So, it is the direction which is specified for the case of radiation intensity, whereas for the case of emissive power, it is assumed that the black body is placed at the center of a hemisphere and we are trying to see what would be the total energy emitted by this black body of unit area which is placed at the center of the hemisphere in all possible directions. So, we need to find out we understand that this i b lambda t which we have defined previously it has a directional dependence. So, the solid angle subtended by the area at a distance from the center at a distance from the center is used to obtain what is the black body radiation intensity. Now, what we have to do is we have to make this area which is subtending a solid angle over here travel in such a way that it defines a hemisphere. So, if we can integrate the area in such a way that the entire hemispherical dome over this unit surface area can be specified then the total energy which passes in all directions in the hemispherical space at a given temperature will be known as the black body emissive power and that is what we are going to evaluate we are going to derive in this in this part of the class. So, from the intensity now we are going towards emissive power in one case the area is fixed it is d a 1 and we are trying to see what is the solid angle. In the other case this area is essentially the area of the hemisphere. So, obviously, the solid angle will change depending on where this unit area is placed. So, this has to be taken into account while 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 evaluating this. So, let us draw the uh, draw this first and see what we get uh, out of this. The first one let us say we have this is the area vector, this is the area. We would like to find out what is going to be the intensity in this specific direction. Okay. So, this is the preferred direction let us call it as omega and in this direction 
the intensity is i b lambda t the area over here is this is the area we are talking about and initially this is the area d a at a temperature t, but as you can see it is not perpendicular it is not perpendicular to the direction of propagation of to the direction in which I would like to find out i b lambda t. So, what I do is I try to see what is the azimuth angle of this area over here and this being the angle theta. So, what I do is I will draw the projection of the green one d a and therefore, this area is simply going to be d a cos theta. So, my d a cos theta is now perpendicular to the direction in which I would like to find out what is i b lambda t. Once again the i b lambda t is the black body radiation intensity. In fact, spectral black body radiation intensity at a given temperature in this at a specific direction which is in this direction. The object from where this intensity is coming is d a. So, I am going to take a projection of this to make the area perpendicular to the direction. So, therefore, this area is going to be d a cos theta. So, if I if I like the if I write the intensity in this case which is I b lambda t should be equal to energy per unit area per unit wavelength and per unit solid angle. So, this is my definition definition of the energy. So, the spectral radiation energy the spectral radiation energy emitted by emitted by d a by d a the surface element d a in which which uh, through an elemental solid angle d omega. So, this 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 angle solid angle is d omega through this d omega I would like to find out how much of how much of spectral radiation energy emitted by d a passes through the solid angle d omega. So, this is the energy which is contained within this tube that I would like to find out. Okay. So, this must be equal to i b lambda t then cos theta d omega times d a d omega. So, this energy obviously would be in order to obtain the energy I need to multiply the intensity with area. So, this is going to be my area the solid angle is this. So, this is the solid angle this this is this is what is going to be the energy the spectral the spectral energy. So, if I would look to like to find out the energy by unit if I want to do it with in terms of unit area it should simply be equal to i b lambda t cos theta d omega. I will go through it once again. My intensity is defined as energy per unit area per unit wavelength per unit solid angle. Okay. So, the area is d a which makes an angle of theta with the area vector this d this d a and I would like to find out how much of energy is going through this tube which forms a solid angle d a at this point. So, in order to do that the first thing is I need to make sure that this the area is placed in a direction perpendicular to this. So, which is going to be d a cos theta and this is the this is this is the azimuth angle which we will discuss later on. So, the energy 
per unit wavelength or in other words the spectral energy would therefore, be the product of intensity times area which is perpendicular to the direction times the solid angle. So, that and then it should be the spectral radiation energy emitted by d a would be the intensity times area which is d a cos theta times solid angle which is d omega. If you like to find out what is the spectral radiation energy emitted by an unit area, I simply divide it by d a and this is the expression of the spectral radiation energy emitted by an unit area instead of d a an unit area. So, this is the quantity which I am going to use, but in order to effectively use this quantity I, I, I need another factor. Okay. So, another figure. So, the figure that I am going to use the going to draw is this one. So, this is a hemisphere which I am drawing of base radius r and this is a slice of that which where the angle is d phi and once I draw this it would be clear to clear to you. the angle over here is theta and this angle this small angle is d theta okay and uh, this is d phi so this one must be equal to r times d phi because this is a plane angle where the radius is r and the angle is d phi. So, the length of the chord must be equal to d phi. This when we go all the way up to 90 minus theta I get this line. If I go all the way to 90 I get a point. If I go up to this point this is simply going to be r d phi sin theta. Okay. So, uh, when sin theta becomes equal to 90 which is at the top then would, this would be equal to 0. So, the, the, the length of the line will vanish and it will become a point. When you think of uh, this one this is d theta and the le length the, the, the this thing the radius is r. So, therefore, this one is simply going simply simply going to be equal to r times d theta. So, if I project it slightly in a better way this is what you get as r d phi and when you go all the way up to this point. So, this is d phi this is d theta. So, what you get like this the area this length is r d theta and this length has to be r d phi sin theta. So, my area which is defined by the angles phi and theta is r d theta sin theta is one, di one dimension the other dimension is r times d theta. So, therefore, from this figure my d omega the solid angle 
is simply going to be equal to d a 1 divided by r square, where d a 1 is this area. So, this area is d a 1, the area which is denoted by the red crosses and this d a 1 is simply the product of these two length scales. So, it is going to be r d theta is one length one side, the other side is r d phi sin theta divided by r square. So, this d omega is simply sin theta d theta d phi that is going to be that is going to be the, the solid angle. So, when we go back to this figure once again, I have my spectral radiation energy emitted by unit area is I b lambda t cos theta times d omega. So, I need to put instead of d omega in this expression the d value of d omega that I have obtained. So, therefore, I b lambda t cos theta d omega would simply be equal to I b lambda at a constant temperature times cos theta sin theta d theta d phi. So, this is because this is going to be the spectral radiation energy by emitted by an unit surface area element through uh, through uh, through through which subtends a solid angle equal to phi over here. Now, uh, now I would like to make integrate this exp expression in such a way such that this area is going to represent the entire hemispherical area. So, if I can do the integration in such a way that this area is going to encompass the entire hemispherical area. So, I can see that in that integration my theta is going to vary from 0 to 90 degree, 0 to 90 degree and my phi is going to vary from 0 to 2 pi. That is what the variation is going to be. Let us look at it another way. This is what I am trying to do. So, in order to create the hemispherical space, my phi is going to be from 0 to 2 pi, whereas my theta is going to be from 0 to pi. So, if I can let this area travel in terms of theta from 0 to 90 degree and in terms of phi from 0 to 2 pi, then this area encompasses the entire hemispherical area available to uh, exposed when the black body is placed at the center. So, the black body ready the spectral because it still depends on the wavelength the spectral black body radiation which is emitted per unit surface area. in the hemispherical space in the hemispherical space <coughs> hemispherical space which is denoted as e b lambda t this is what is the spectral black body radiation emitted per unit surface area into the hemispherical space would simply be i b lambda t which is outside of the integration sign and phi would be from 0 to 2 pi and theta would be from 0 to pi by 2 and inside would be cos theta sin theta d theta d phi. One more time since it is black body radiation intensity, so it is independent of the direction since the black body radiation is diffuse. So, I b lambda t does not depend on the direction and therefore, it can be taken out of the integration sign. So, what is left is cos theta sin theta d theta d phi and as I have explained <coughs> the theta uh, the phi is going to vary from 0 to 2 pi and theta is going to vary from 0 to pi by 2. If I perform this integration, I have an expression of E b lambda t in terms of I b lambda t. So, what that expression would be? 
once you perform this uh, one, once you perform this integration it is there in your text I am not going to do it over here it is a very simple integration. This is the expression for black body radiation the spectral black body emissive power. So, since it is so it is energy per unit area per unit wavelength that is going to be its unit energy per unit area per unit wavelength. So, the spectral black body radiation intensity is related to spectral emissive power of an unit based on an unit area in in a hemispherical space is denoted by specific relation. So, when you use this function for I b lambda t, E b lambda t would be C 1 The emissive power, the spectral emissive power of a black body of a unit area at a given temperature is provided as a function of wavelength and as a function of temperature. So, this is the important part. So, E b lambda t is a function of lambda and is a function of temperature. This specific e expression will be utilized in the next class to show how the emissive power of a black body spectral emissive power of a black body depends on the wavelength and depends on the temperature. So, what we have done in this class is if we have we have placed a black body of unit area inside a hemispherical dome and we have found out what is the total emissive power of this black body having unit area at a given temperature what is the spectral power emissive power of black this black body into the hemispherical space. So, this is what it looks like in this hemispherical space how much of radiative energy a black body of unit area at a given temperature is providing. So, this is related to the intensity of radiation and we know the intensity of radiation through the use of Planck's function and then we can find out E b lambda t as a function of the wavelength and as a function of temperature. So, this functional relation we will explore a bit further and then we would see that it is going to give rise to certain relations that we know of. For example, the most common example or relation of radiation the Stephen Boltzmann law can be directly directly derived from this black body emissive power. So, we will do that in the next class.